Hi guys, welcome to an everyday. I've come out here and I want to do a course analysis video with you. Um, looking at a course, checking out how I would handle it, um, any areas that I think might be difficult to handle, um, and just looking at it basically like that and giving you an idea. It's obviously my opinion on a course. With all courses, when you look at them on paper, there's often a case that they look different when you actually run them. So um, this first course, it's from the pre-selection qualifier for Team GB, being held on the 24th of February 2023. It's Jumping One, and the course is designed by Finnish judge um, Essa Muatka. I'm not sure if I've said that right, and I do apologise heavily for that. So I think the first thing I need to point out is that you begin in a backwards way, if you like, because you don't set the dog up to go over their jump towards you, you're sending them to go away from you and turn back on you. So you're starting the course on a wing wrap. This is something I'm seeing now, um, more and more, at higher levels, bigger shows. It means you don't have to set the dog up with their back to potentially other dogs in um, the arena. Obviously, in this course, it's also to save in helping with space because there's limited space. The arena is obviously a very narrow arena. So being able to get a very long lead up to the jump, first jump, which is what you want, is not easy. So by setting up so the dog has to wing wrap, you're ch changing up where you've had that jump and you can um, mean that there is a long lead up. They can actually set back quite far to get that. Um, without actually having to worry about the fact that there's limited space. The big thing I'm seeing next is um, number two, which is the long jump. So you go one, wing wrap, long jump, and then you have to turn back on yourself relatively sharply to um, three. Now, the thing I'm seeing here is that we don't do this. It's as simple as that. Um, you, traditionally, when we see a long jump like this we expect to go straight over it how would i handle this mm, i've sort of looked at it and gone mm. uh, so i think i want i don't necessarily want to tell my dog to turn tightly over a long jump and honestly i'm not sure that many dogs will be able to turn relatively tightly over a long over it's so what i would ask them to do is do their jump as normal um straight over and then I would be asking them to pick up and turn on the flats, which is not something I do that often, but I would do it. Now, this Swift, I could probably set up far enough back that I could send her to jump one and be able to walk across in front of the long over, call her to me. And then what I would do is then I would um, do uh, probably a very loose front cross to shape her jumps to turn her to get back over three um, and this is actually going to help me for the next stage of this course as well where i'm going to be when i want to handle five now obviously there's a jump in the way and um, the temptation for the dog is to curl into the handler take the jump um that they shouldn't be taking if i was fancy dancy i might have a cue that tells them to keep driving forward so they don't take that jump i don't have that what i'm gonna have to do is make sure that um, I give myself enough distance on three that I can cut across and peel off as they're heading into that tunnel and get to a similar position. So I'm going to have to, that's why I said with one, I think if I can handle it from the back, from the far side of the long jump, that's going to be the best bet. Because then what I can do is I can get to the other side of five. There's still a jump in the way, so I'm going to have to sort of cut really tight. But I can peel off send them into the tunnel hopefully they're going to commit to that tunnel that's what you want and it's not handle you want the independence and then when they're coming out of that tunnel i'm going to call them to me and i'm going to call them to me on my far arm so you imagine i'm coming through that gap i'm going to be on my right arm to try and pull them away from that jump and as they're coming towards me i will probably then try and put a blind in and pull them um onto my left to do the next jump that's how i would hope to do that so what we've got next is we're sending the dog into the tunnel. So they go five, six, tunnel. And then when we come out, ideally we'd go straight in those weeds, but we don't. We've got to turn them right. And there's jump eight, which is that jump that was causing us an issue before. They've got to go tightly over that and then come into the weeds. 
we've got to send them round um, that jump and we've got to pull them through the gap as well because there is a gap. Now, as long as your dog understands it's tight cue to tight wing wrap cue, it shouldn't be an issue. But I did have this with Swift the other day, if anybody's watched my video, to say that she suddenly decided that there's a gap, but I will actually take the extra jump. So, can happen. So what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to send my dog from the mouth of the tunnel. So I'm going to pick them up really close to the mouth of the exit of the tunnel. Send them in the wing wrap. Really reinforce that cue to say you've got to pull tight. And then I'm going to effectively do the weaves like a freddle. So they're going to be on my right arm. And I'm going to be moving and pulling them in. And they've got to pick those weaves up. So I'm like, so like a freddle. Um, so I'm going to walk as briskly as I can. And I'm going to move laterally. So I'm going to move in a diagonal. So towards where the tyre is. But not towards the tyre. But like on that plane. Encourage my dog to keep you in the weaves. Then call them back and send them over, um, what is it now, 10. Ask them to wing wrap there. Now they're up to the tyre, 11. Now the next bit is this tricky bit on 12 to 13 because you've got a tight, tight ring wrap and then they've got to send out to the one that's on the left. So they're coming back on themselves. You've almost got to pull them through and push them. Now, so... If I can get plenty of distance, I might be able to pick them up on my drive arm and do it as a freddle. It's probably not going to be what we consider a freddle normally because I'm going to be behind. But I can still probably pick them up, do it as a tight freddle. So it's going to be a, um, a freddle wrap because they're going to do a tight wing wrap. And then they're still going to be my right arm. Now I can push them up onto 13. And here I want to do this from the paper anyway I want to do this as a rear cross so I'm going to be sending them over what is effectively to their eyes as they're going at it, the right wing so it'll be a check cue. Okay so my job now on this next section is to get to that gap between the two tunnels. I'm gonna it's a lovely drive line now so once I've got my dog committed they're gonna drive they're gonna be motoring I am aiming for that gap between the two tunnels because that is where my next position needs to be. So I send them into the tunnel and I'm going to obviously tell them tunnel, tunnel to get to the next one. Even if I'm not quite there, as long as they commit to that second tunnel, I'm okay. I'm still aiming for that gap because now I want to get to 17. What I'm going to do, I'm going to tell them left out of the tunnel. Um, so they're going to hopefully listen and turn left. And I can be behind and then I'm going to say to them that I want them to wrap, wrap number 17. I want them to go to the back of that. Actually, I'm not going to treat it as a wrap cue because a wrap means tight. I'm going to teach it as a round cue. I'm going to ask them to go round. So I'm going to say round, round. And I'm going to pick up on my right arm, hopefully. And here is I'm going to use a cue because I, there's a jump there. and I don't want them to do that jump. And so if I flick my arm, then there's going to be a risk they're going to jump over that um, jump. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be picking up on my right arm. And my aim is to get them to come to me like on a hair cue. I've got a hair cue, which means come here, mm -hmm. come right into me. It's almost like a heel work cue, but on the move. And I'm going to send them up to a tunnel. Now, hopefully if I say tunnel, tunnel, they're not going to even look at that jump because the jump is set to one side. So that's how I'm going to handle that bit, get in that gap, get there, because I don't want to have to move position too much because now I need to get across. There's another gap I need to go through between jump 17 and that awkward jump because now I've got to get to the other side of them. So 19 is around the back, but it's quite a straightforward one. It's almost like a natural line one. So I would not consider that too much problem apart from the fact the dog is going to be wanting to curl into you because they're coming out of the tunnel, they're going to be looking for you. So you need to make sure you're queuing it to tell them that you're going to drive out around that one. As I said, I'm going to be moving through that gap between doing well five and eight, if you like. But I don't want to go too far for it because I now need to be back for 20. So I want to send them round the back of 19. And now I need to send them around 20. So I want to be there to help with 20. But most importantly, I want to be there to help shape the finish. Because it's quite a narrow gap to get to cross to 20 and one going to go around the back and then flick away from me and then I'm going to ask them to go on that's how I want to do this I did look at it and think well, what about doing it as a tight wrap around the nearing and it is possible but that is a wall at the end and so then they're going to be coming at the wall at a diagonal yeah dogs can do that but actually I think 
from the course map anyway, I would rather do it flicking them around and away across what is to them going to be the left wing. So it's a nice straight line finish. But that's what I thought I'd share today and I hope you've enjoyed this. If you have enjoyed this Everyday Canines video, you can find us on Facebook, YouTube. Obviously you hit the subscribe um, and bell notification so you know when new videos are out. You can also find us on Instagram, TikTok, and of course there's a website. And if you have any course plans that you would like me to analyse, please send them over. From anywhere in the world, if you know, it'd be great. I quite like to look at international courses as well. This is obviously an international course. So if you've got a course plan and you'd like me to take a look, pop it in the comments or send it to me on my Facebook or whatever. And, you know, maybe next time I'll be looking at your course. So I hope you're all well, guys, uh, and take care. And I hope to see you again very, very soon.